Hey everyone, it's Catherine here from Inky Finger Cat. Um, I decided to join in with a little challenge over at UK Stampers Forum, which was to use embossing. And I did embossing in a couple of different ways. Um, so I started with this inky background that I had in the stash. I'm pretty sure it's Distress Oxides, a couple of different colours. And then I grabbed an embossing folder to do dry embossing, but decided to emboss in the embossing. Uh, so the way that you do that, is to basically ink up one side of your embossing folder um pop your paper in and then as you run it through your machine it adds up the ink in this case versamark to that side of the embossing uh, in this case the debossed area um the bit that goes in and then you're gonna add your embossing powder over the top heat it up and then you've got sort of shine so it depends which side do you ink up as to which ones you get um in this case i did debossing and i used a pearlescent uh embossing powder so it isn't a color uh it's it's called white pearl so it's slightly paler but uh so it's not it's not very obvious on the video um but i promise you in real life it's absolutely gorgeous it adds a really beautiful finish to the embossing so it sort of highlights the texture but it's got this beautiful sort of opal type feeling to it is the best description so that was my background done with two types of embossing and now i have stamped out all of the flowers from the smile more from alt new which i bought in the sale a few days ago um actually this video is going to go up in a few weeks so you'll have already seen the um the whole video where i shared it and i've stamped them all in um a smoky slate color and then i'm choosing two colors that i think will work with that background so um I've got one of them's a distressing, one's a stampin' up pink. It really doesn't matter. And even though this is not watercolour cardstock, what I'm doing is I'm sort of loosely watercolouring the images. I stamped them in the, in the pale grey so that I'd got the line art, but it wasn't in your face. Because what I'm going to do is, once these have dried, uh, once they've all been painted and then they've been dried, I'm then going to emboss over the top. So what that'll do is basically put the line art back in again and then you've got this colour in the background, but it's a really messy watercolour look. Uh, another way of doing that, literally, I could have, if I had another sheet of that background, inky background, is I could have just stamped directly on top of that and that would have worked exactly the same. But yeah, that's that's what I ended up doing. But it's really important when you go emboss that everything's dry. So I'm giving this a really good dry. And then I'm going to stick it back into my stamp platform. So this, this technique works really well if you've got a stamp platform. It doesn't work so well if you've not. And what you need to remember to do is to stamp, stamp them in the same way. Leave the stamps in the um, platform. And then when you come back to it, you can stamp over the top in exactly the same position. Hope that makes sense. So I have grabbed for this some purple embossing powder. Um, and that's going to put that line art back in. Now, my... My Versamark is not very juicy. So although it's managed to stamp everything, it wasn't clinging onto that embossing powder very well. Um, ignore what I was doing there with that piece of cardstock. I changed my mind about what I was doing. Um, but yeah, I um, I had to heat from underneath because it was actually making my embossing powder sort of flirt off. It doesn't matter. The end pieces still look fine. And the way that I end up using them, because you can see there's a lot of flowers, um, it, it really doesn't matter that some of them have got incomplete line art um, because the embossing powder moved. Uh, but a good way to stop that from happening is heat from underneath. That then melts it from underneath and they, they don't fly around if you've got a powerful heat tool like mine is, which blasts air at them. So I decided after I die cut them out, literally to just line them all up in a cluster going from the top left to the bottom right um, and just create a cluster. And originally I was going to do the leaves and uh, I changed my mind and decided to keep it literally all the same tones of those purples and peachy colours, which is an odd combination. And I'm not entirely sure that I've ever done that as a combination before, but I really like it. I chose this uh, crumb cake card. I'm saying crumb cake, but it might be Sahara sand, I'm not sure. But the sort of like very light craft coloured cardstock scrap to put my sentiment on. And I stamped two sentiments. One's a very fine 
little line of words and the other one is quite bold and there is a die that die cuts that out so the bold one i embossed as well as stamping in the purple uh, i also embossed it with the purple before i die cut it out and then i die cut it a couple more times just so i could stack it up because we all know i like a chunky sentiment um it just becomes more of a um a statement in my opinion but I decided that it's too busy a background to just put it onto the background. Um, so this is where I'm going, yeah, that sort of just gets swallowed up with those very busy floral images. So I went and grabbed this Sizzix die set that's got a circle and a couple of banners. And I took that white cardstock that I had changed my mind about earlier. And I die cut the circle and the banner a couple of times. Didn't end up using the banner the second time. I only ended up using the circle. So it was stacked. And then the banner I decided to ink up with that peachy colour um, ink. So that it tones in. And then I am just going to add it all together as a little cluster. And at this point I think, yep, yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to dry that. But I fancy having some kind of linen thread or something in it. And I chose this one that's actually quite a dark grey. But I think it works in terms of contrast. So the way I've done that is I've just looped it round, stuck it to the back so that the ends are secured underneath. Uh, and then put quite a heavy amount of glue on. And then I chose some purpley sequins just to finish off the um, embellishment of this card. So you've got a couple of different ways of embossing there. So I've got embossing the sentiment. Perfect. I've embossed the floral images over the top of a watercoloured line art. Watercolour and the, and the line art. Uh, and I've embossed the embossing in the background. Pulled in this panel of purple just to tie it all together and add it to a five by seven card. And then here, I'm just trying my hardest to show you the embossing. I don't know that it comes out very well, but I promise you it's a glorious background. And hopefully you'll be able to pick that up on some of these photos that I've taken. Um, but yeah, just glorious piece. So I enjoyed taking part in the challenge to use embossing um, over at UK Stampers Forum. So I'm gonna go and link my little card up and I hope you've enjoyed watching the process. Please do give me a thumbs up if you did, comment below and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, bye bye.